Hi, and welcome to section 2, Working with Spring IOC. In this section, we're going to learn what inversion of control, or short, IOC is, what dependency injection is, we're also going to learn what annotations are and which additional annotations Spring provides for you to use as a developer. We're going to learn how to work with annotation-based dependency injection and also specifically which annotations you should use when performing dependency injection. And last but not least, we're going to learn how to create your own injectable components and how to perform dependency injection specifically with the auto-wired annotation provided by Spring. Introducing Spring IOC. In this video, we're going to learn what inversion of control or short IOC is and where to use it. We're going to learn what dependency injection is, how it is related to inversion of control and also where to use it. But first, let's have a look at some of the terms and definitions. Beforehand, I want to mention that inversion of control really is a very controversial topic in software engineering when it comes to its definition of what it actually is. So developers have very different opinions about that topic. I want to explain it the following way. Inversion of control is basically a software design principle where parts of the software receive flow of control from another framework. So in comparison to traditional code, where the traditional custom code calls libraries to take care of certain generic tasks, when IOC is used, the situation is basically inverted the other way around and the framework calls the custom code. Another explanation of IOC is that it actually tries to separate the what to do part from the when to do part. So it can be used for decoupling the execution of a task from the actual implementation and that can, for example, help by avoiding problems when replacing parts of your code in test cases compared to when the code runs in production mode. One example of basically separating the what to do from the when to do part is interfaces. So an interface, as you all know, describes what there is to do and then the actual component implementing the interface uses it whenever there is something to do. So it takes over the when part. And we're going to later see a little bit of an example that basically shows inversion of control that way. Then another very important part of inversion of control is dependency injection. And dependency injection is basically one way of achieving inversion of control, where control is inverted via setting other objects an existing object depends on. So there are various ways of achieving dependency injection, such as setter-based dependency injection, field-based dependency injection, interface dependency injection, and constructor-based dependency injection. And in the upcoming sections, we're going to learn in detail what dependency injection is and how to do it. For now, just leave it at that. And let's finish up with a quick example of inversion of control. And for that, we head back over to our project. So here I have provided a little bit of an example. We have a class factory that produces something. And the things this factory produces is basically documents that are printed. So in addition to that, we have a printer and we have a document. And the document is basically used by the printer to print it. And right now, we have a very hard dependency because the printer strongly depends on the document it tries to print. And now we want to make use of inversion of control and interfaces to basically change that and no longer let the printer depend so much on the document. So let's create an interface. I'm just going to call it document interface and it has one method. And this method returns the page of the document, for example. And now we're going to let this document implement the interface. 
and we of course are going to replace the get page method with the interface method. Also you can see here we have this override annotation which implies that this method is actually from an interface in this case. We can return our page and now for the printer instead of basically creating this document in the constructor we are instead going to hand it over via a constructor parameter and we're also not going to use the definite document class but rather we're going to use the interface so let's replace this and instead of creating the document here again we are passing it as a constructor parameter of course we have to use this here and now as you can see because document interface has this get page method we're still perfectly fine to use it like this and now we're going to actually create our document here and pass it along to the printer and now our code compiles and the basic change it is that now our printer no longer depends on the document but the factory can decide what the printer actually prints.